20s or 30s is the perfect time to save for retirement. Although it may seem a long way off, the actions you take at this stage of your life will be key in unlocking your dream retirement, in helping you retire earlier and live the lifestyle you want in retirement, whether that's sitting on a beach most of the year or just enjoying life at home stress-free. But to achieve that, you need a plan. And in this video, I'm going to provide four tips to help you set up your retirement for success. If you're new here, I'm Alex, a management consultant by day, and on this channel, we like to discuss all things personal finance with a particular focus on how to grow your money. If you'd like to follow my own personal finance journey with regular investment portfolio updates, as well as a bunch of other personal finance related videos like this one, then I'd greatly appreciate to subscribe. But for this video, let's get into it and let's start with the first tip. This tip is all about putting money into your pension as early as you can. Most people will rely on a pension to fund their retirement. And of course you'll need to build a big enough pot size to fund and sustain the standard of living you want. Typically, the earlier you start contributing to your pot, the easier it will be to get to a good pot size. And even if you start with relatively small amounts, it can make a huge difference to your financial future, thanks to the magic of the compound effect. When you're in your 20s and 30s, you have the opportunity to maximize this compound effect, as the earlier you start contributing to your pension, the more time the compound effect has to work and the bigger impact it will have. And let's take an example to showcase the magic of this compound effect and the difference it can make if you start in your 20s and 30s contributing to your pension compared to if you started later on in life. Let's say you started contributing £100 a month into a pension from the age of 25 with the aim to retire at 65. If we assume there's an annual growth rate of 8% in your pension pot, this would mean that after 40 years of contributing £100 a month, the 48000 you invested would be worth over 349000 by the time you reach the age of 65. And 301000 of that would come from compounded increases in the value of the investments. However, if you delay that investment by 20 years and start contributing to your pension scheme at 45 instead of 25, the picture is much less rosy. Here, the compound effect would only have 20 years to work and your pot would suffer because of that. Your pot would only be worth 58,000 by the time you reach the age of 65 if we still assume an 8% annual growth rate. Even if you doubled your monthly amount, your monthly contribution amount to 200 pounds, the 48,000 you invested would be worth just 117,000 by the time you reach the age of 65. This is 232,000 less than the previous example where you started contributing at the age of 25, despite the amount you contribute in both these examples being the same at 48,000 and 48,000. This shows that starting to save early for retirement can make a huge difference. And the compound effect makes it well worth setting aside whatever you can afford and as early as you can. And if you do this in your 20s, your later life self will definitely thank you. So that's the first tip. The second tip is all about maximizing your employer's pension contributions. Employers have to legally offer a pension scheme and they must also automatically enroll you into that scheme and contribute a set percentage of your salary into your pension pot as long as you meet some basic eligibility criteria of being classed as a worker, being aged above 22, earning at least 10,000 per year and mainly working in the UK. Most people employed in this country will meet this criteria and therefore be eligible for free contributions into their pension scheme from their employer. And how this works is that as long as you contribute a minimum of 5% of your earnings into your pension scheme, your employer must legally contribute 3%. For example, if you earn a salary of 35,000 and contribute 5% of your earnings into your workplace pension, this will mean that you'll contribute 1,750 pounds each year and benefit from a minimum of 1,050 pounds each year in additional contributions from your employer which sets aside a total of 2,800 into your pension each year. The 3% here is essentially free money, and many employers actually go above this figure and contribute more, with it being commonplace for employers to contribute anywhere between 5% to 20% of your salary into your pension every year. In these cases though, where employers go above the 3%, they may ask you to match contributions in order to get the, the maximum amount from them in terms of their contribution. For example, if an employer has matching contributions of 10%, this means you'll need to put in 10% yourself into your pension to qualify for the maximum 10% contributions from your employer. If you contribute less, they'll contribute less in this case. So if you contributed 6%, they'll 
they'll only contribute 6% too. In these cases, consider paying in whatever amount will maximize your employer's contributions, as it's effectively a pay rise and free money, so it's worth maximizing. And even if your employer only pays the minimum 3%, it's still worth maximizing that too, as it's also free money, and even relatively small amounts, as we saw in the first tip, can really build up over time, thanks to the power of the compound effect. So that's tip two in maximizing your employer's pension contributions. The third tip is all about exploiting a tax bracket trick to help you save on tax. When you contribute to your pension, you qualify for tax relief, meaning you don't need to pay tax on whatever amount you contribute to your pension scheme. Most people are aware of this tax saving, but they don't exploit it, particularly in the scenario when approaching the next tax bracket. What I mean by this is that if you're moving into the next tax bracket, upping your pension contributions can mean you don't end up paying the additional income tax. For example, if we consider that the higher rate tax threshold is currently £50,270, meaning that any money earned above this figure up to the next tax bracket will be subject to the 40% tax rate. And let's say as part of this example, we have a person who gets a pay rise from 50000 to 53000 and that pay rise moves them into that higher rate tax bracket. All of this means they'll have to pay 40% income tax on the £2,730 above the threshold. However, this assumes that the individual wants all of their pay rise to go into their take home pay bucket, which of course is subject to tax. If they make a different decision and put 100% of their pay rise into their pension, they shouldn't have to pay any income tax, let alone the higher rate. So this example shows what this tip is all about in saving you money on tax and helping you build up your pension pot with that saved money. And this should come in handy, especially nowadays, as the tax thresholds are being frozen, yet wages are rising dragging more people over those thresholds into the higher tax rate brackets. This tip can also work with bonuses, as with bonuses, a big chunk for most people is eaten away by the tax man. But if you decide to put 100% of your bonus into your pension pot, you can save on tax, keeping the tax man's clause right away from your bonus, but also help build up your pension pot by putting a sizable sum, depending on what your bonus is, straight into your pension. So pensions are great as a mechanism to save on tax. The last and fourth tip is all about checking if your pension is on track and taking action. When you're in your 20s or 30s, it's the perfect time to set the course to deliver the retirement you want. But this starts with understanding where you're currently heading based on your current pot size and your current contributions amount. To understand this, to understand how big your pot size could be at retirement age, there's plenty of free online calculators out there where you just plug in a few numbers about your current pot size and current contributions, your preferred retirement age, and then within a few minutes, you understand where you're heading, if there's a gap between where you're heading at the moment and the retirement you want, and you'll be able to quickly identify the actions you can take to set yourself back on course and deliver the retirement you want. So that's the last tip in checking if you're on course to deliver the retirement you want and taking action if you're not. Let me know if you have any further tips in terms of helping those in their 20s and 30s save for retirement. I'd be particularly interested if you're not in your 20s and 30s, if you're in your 40s, 50s and 60s, and if there's any tips you did back in your 20s and 30s you're really grateful for, or things you wish you did and want to pass on the advice to, to us to help us save for retirement. But for this video, thanks for watching. See you next time.